Idea. I'm sorry, buddy. We're going in the freezer. Well, I just can't catch a fucking break. Driving through the city, you'd think it was abandoned. But these things just keep coming after me. Freezing to death in a government kitchen's walk-in freezer was not part of my genius five-step plan. But here I am. If I could only get my hands on some good weaponry, maybe I'd stand a chance. That is what I'm doing here at the Army National Guard base. Apparently, some assholes thought they needed to set the alarms before they abandoned the place. When I woke up today, I saw the city in the daylight. Half of it was just gone. If I didn't know any better, I'd say a meteor or a missile was the cause. But living 10 miles from the impact site, I'd tell you there's no way that could have happened without me noticing. Or being dead. In short, I don't know what the fuck is going on here. And these things, these amalgamations of once living beings, are unexplainable. They're pieces of so many different animals and even people that have clearly been killed, but now seem to be working parts of something else entirely. What is that? That's not a thing that exists on Earth. Everyone I know is probably dead. The only family I had left is dead. I haven't even had the time to process this shit. I'm still waiting to wake up from this nightmare. 
to find myself sweating in my bed. That's the only realistic explanation here, right? It's all just a bad dream that seems like it's going on forever. That makes the most sense. The alternative being monsters that meld with flesh have killed pretty much everything except for myself and a six pound dog. I'm leaning towards a super fucked up dream. I'm ready to wake up now. I'm done with this. As soon as I... What the fuck? Oh shit, oh shit. Drop your fucking gun. Fuck you! No, fuck you. Put it down. Now. Put yours down, asshole! Okay, okay, same time. Alright, on the count of three. Hey, shut that fucking dog up before I shoot you both. You even look at my dog wrong, I'll shoot you right in the fucking eye! Fuck you. No, fuck you! I'm warning you, I will fucking kill you right now. Do it, bitch! You ain't touching my fucking dog! Alright, alright, fine. Weapons down on the count of three. Okay. Two. One. Fine. Who the fuck are you? Corporal John Evans, National Guard. But since I'm the last living member of my unit, that puts me in charge around here. Okay, and? And that means you're in my fucking house. Uninvited. And I might add that breaking into a military base is a serious offense. I have every right to defend this facility with lethal means. Dude, you want to start this shit again? I don't give a fuck who you think you are, I'll- it, Calm down, man. Look, you can stay here for a day or two while I debrief you. I don't want to stay. You can have this place to yourself for all I care. I just need some guns and I'll be gone. What? I'm not handing military weaponry over to a civilian. Don't you fucking get it? There is no military, and there are no civilians. All that's left is those fucking things. Kill or be killed. That's it. Yeah, I saw how well you were doing that. Why do you think I need the guns, you fucking moron? Well, before we even talk about that, you're going to help me clean up your fucking mess. What mess? Oh, right. But I'm not leaving here without those guns. Yeah, well, just come with me, tough guy. We got off to a bit of a rough start, but I imagine most people that meet pointing guns at each other don't exactly see eye to eye. I guess he doesn't feel much better than I do. Everyone we know is already or likely dead. Bloodthirsty, whatever the fuck those things are, hide and wait or even hunt us. The one John killed was yet another horror that shouldn't exist. It looked like a wolf, but with six eyes, each of the extra two pairs resting above the original. Thick fur was intermingled with long, sharp spines like those of a porcupine. Several rows of dagger-like serrated teeth lined its abnormally long jaws. As if it couldn't get any worse, the claws on this fucking thing looked like they belonged to a velociraptor. But strangely enough, the creature's form appeared juvenile. While it was almost four feet from tail to shoulder, its skeletal structure and muscles were lean and slender, like that of a pup. We argued over who was going to drag the body outside for quite a while, but I couldn't entirely refute the fact that I had directly led the thing into where the man was living. Donning gloves and respirators, we watched the wooded area in the back of the base for 20 minutes before he opened the door and stood watch with his rifle 
while I pulled the creature out into the grass. It was far heavier than it looked. After getting it far away enough from the building, he held out an axe and motioned back towards the dead monster. When I sarcastically explained the thing was already dead, he just shrugged and said, you never know. I couldn't argue with that logic, so I took the axe to its head until it separated from its body. Sunk the axe into its chest a few more times, just for good measure. One weird thing was that the black tubes I'd seen in the one that killed Shannon weren't present. It was almost like this one was a complete creature rather than just parts of other things stuck together. In either case, it's dead now. We took turns digging a hole to bury the body. John made a good point that we don't know if it will attract more of these things if it's rotting in the backyard. Don't much care for digging holes, but I did kind of wreck the man's house. The next step was barricading the door I'd shot open and then bleaching everywhere the creature had been. It wasn't until later that night that we sat down to trade information and discuss what was next from here. Have you seen anyone else? We can't be the only ones, right? You're the first alive person I've seen in a little over three weeks. Three weeks? What do you mean, three weeks? It's been, what, like, two days since everything got fucked up? Look, man, I don't know what happened to you or what you've been through, but I can tell you for a fact, as a first responder, it's been 24 days since contact point. I... No. There's no way. And what the fuck is contact point? Uh, Lucas, let's just start with this. Tell me everything you remember from when this all started. Okay, well, I first heard sirens, a lot of them. I tried checking the TV and then my computer, but nothing would connect. What? Then I heard something outside and I went to go check it out. It sounded like some kind of an animal or crackhead. I immediately went inside and called 911, but it wouldn't connect. Then one of whatever those things are smashed its way through my front door. I ran into my bedroom and grabbed my gun. I tried hiding, but it found me. I shot it several times, and it seemed to go down. But when I looked at it, there were two heads, and one of them... One of them looked just like my sister, Shannon. I got the fuck out of there, but driving down the road, I found Shannon's car, and her body, missing, missing her head. I went back to the house and took her off of that thing with an axe. It bled some kind of black ooze, and strange large tubes connected the flesh to her head. Somehow, it had used her head to speak to me, called me by name, used her memories even, I think. What the fuck are these things, man? I don't know exactly. I have an idea, but we'll get to that. Tell me what happened next. The more information I have, the better we can put this all together. I spent the next hour and a half telling the corporal in detail all the things that I'd experienced. All the bodies that were torn to shreds, the city on fire and in ruin. I told him about the thing I'd found in the alleyway that was about to kill my new friend. How I'd lost my shit and went after it. And how it had nearly killed me before the brave little dog saved my ass in return. He looked at my friend with a new respect after that. He might be small, but he was a survivor, like us. That was a bond that men like us could easily understand. Going through a life or death situation with someone changes things. Even if 
in this instance and was a five pound dog. Loyalty isn't something you can buy. And when the debts are in blood, either spilled or saved, they transcend race, species, or ideology. After Corporal Evans understood that, he didn't look at my little attack dog as a nuisance any longer. Hell, most grown men would have taken the opportunity to leave me in that alley, if it meant giving themselves a head start. I've started to depend on this little guy, emotionally, as crazy as it sounds. I still can't believe my sister is gone. It's surreal. This whole thing is just unreal. I keep waiting to wake up from this nightmare. But I'm still here each time I wake up in this miserable, empty existence. There was still something about Evans that I didn't trust. Chalk it up to that innate feeling you get when you know someone knows something that you don't. He was too calm, too deliberate. Thinking about it, could I even be sure all this shit didn't have something to do with the military in the first place? Maybe this was a weapons test gone wrong, or an escaped experiment. Much more plausible than my previous first place theory of being trapped in a looping nightmare. No, there was something he was keeping from me. Not that I think the guy intends to harm me deliberately. Could have done that when we first met. But I'll certainly be keeping a watchful eye on the fucker. I snapped out of my internal digression to see Evans fixing me with a disapproving look. Welcome back, sunshine. Glad you could make it to class. Hey, fuck off, dude. I was thinking about stuff. Well, if you're done thinking about stuff, I'd appreciate it if you'd fill me in on a few more details. No, man. I've told you plenty. It's time for you to tell me some shit. How about for starters, you explain that you claim that this all started 24 days ago when I know that it's been less than 48 hours. <sighs> to understand that, there's a lot of other things you need to hear first. Well... Let me just check my calendar. Let me see here, where'd I put that? Ah, here we are, right in my Ghostbusters lunchbox where I left it. Hmm. Let's see, what do we got? Oh, yeah, it looks like I have an appointment with a gentleman right about now. Mr. Jack Shit. I'm sure Mr. Shit wouldn't mind if I move that to a later time. Yeah, you know what? I'll go ahead and push that until tomorrow. Very funny. Alright, so... Looks like we're the last two people alive. Considering that, and our overwhelmingly clear schedules, and I already checked with your secretary, why don't you go ahead and fill me in? You're hilarious. Look, man. The only family I had left is dead. I cut my sister's head off a monster so that I could bury her. Do you have any fucking idea what that feels like? Now you're telling me that I'm missing about 22 days worth of time and you want to withhold information? Well, protocol is... Dude, fuck your protocol! Be straight with me, or I'm gonna take some guns and be on my way. And before you start, I don't give a fuck what you say. You have no claim to any of this shit. There's no more law, there's no government, at least not here. So I'll take what I need to survive, and you can try and stop me. Alright, I hear you. But look, you need to understand that I have a responsibility here. And before you start, I agree with you. If I were in your shoes, I'd feel the same way. But I took an oath to defend this country and its interests, so there's a lot I can't tell you, but... You've got to be kidding me with this shit! You... But I think I have a way to help solve both of our problems. Okay. And what is that? Lucas... Wait, what's your last name? Riley. Why? Lucas Riley, you are hereby ordered for induction into the Armed Forces of the United States. You will report to this facility for service and I will be your commanding officer. What the fuck are you talking about? I just conscripted you. You... you can't do that. I can, and I just did. Welcome to the army, son. Your country needs you. 
Dude, I don't care what you say. I'm not in the army. You can't force me to... Oh, shit. You're about to get your weapon. Hey, wait! What are you doing? We stop those things or they come in here. Fuck. Fuck! Hurry the fuck up. I'm right behind you. Oh, shit. Here, you ever handle one of these? I shot my buddy's AR-15 at the range a few times. Perfect. Same basic principles, but this is the Army-issued Colt M4. The key difference is your fire selector. You'll notice safe, semi, and burst. There's no full auto, and burst will give you three shots to each trigger pull. Be sure and keep trigger discipline. Don't touch that trigger unless you've got a target in your sights and you're ready to shoot. I don't want you shooting me in the ass because you got spooked. Got it? Yeah. Hey, I'm not fucking around here, man. Do you copy? I copy. Good. Now slide on one of these chest rigs and fill all of your pouches with extra magazines. You do know how to reload your weapon, correct? Yeah, man, I know how to fucking shoot, okay? <sighs> we'll see. Suppose you get yourself killed. Well, it's not on me. Just remember that. Okay, are you ready? Ready as I'm going to be. Right, stick close and do everything I say. Trust me, and we'll get through this. You got it? I'm with you. What's good? How you peeps doing? How you like this, huh? Revenants. That's what's up, you know? <laughs> this is my this is my kind of shit. This is what I like. What do you like? You like this? If you do, consider supporting the channel. How can you do that, you ask? Well, I'll tell you. Like, subscribe, share, hit the bell. You know, it just, it helps out a lot, all those things. We put a lot of time and energy into these stories, these creations. We try to do stuff here that, you know, some other people do kind of like this, but a lot of them have whole teams of people. Right here, it's pretty much just me. And Mr. Black, he helps out, but he's got his own shit, so, you know, it's just me doing it all. It takes a lot of time, and I got a lot of stuff to do. So I try to do it when I can, you know? But in the meantime, I really, really appreciate it. If you like, subscribe, share, hit the bell. That just, it gets the channel going. We gotta pick up steam and keep on chugging. Hope you guys liked it. Got more stuff coming soon. Love ya. Bye.